So, I'm alive. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. My last mission as a US government civil servant was in a helicopter off the coast of Hawaii. We'll learn about that in a future episode, but this video is different. This is not like Destin's going to go explore a thing and make an internet video about it. This is an actual training scenario that I was assigned and I had to go through in order to get certified to accomplish my mission. Let's think about an airplane crash in water. When an airplane lands on the water, you've got these two long wings on each side that kind of serve as pontoons and they keep the airplane upright. Up is up, down is down. You usually see on the news where people are like walking out over the wings and they're waiting on boats to pick them up and stuff like that. Helicopters are different. In a helicopter, you've got these heavy engines up top, and no matter what, if you land, that engine weight is going to cause the helicopter to flip over and you're going to start to sink. The point of this training is to survive that scenario, and Marines go through it all the time, people at offshore oil rigs. This is an important piece of training that will save lives. This is my instructor, Corey Catlin. He's trained helicopter pilots for years supporting oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico, but today he's training me along with a class of young U.S. Marines. Training started off dead serious right out of the gate. They show us a fatal helicopter crash and explain the environment that the people inside the helicopter are going through. After that, Corey explained the techniques and equipment that you would use to get out of a situation like this. For example, he explained this thing called the rodeo grip and how you have to anchor yourself to the seat. He explained how it's important to exhale all the way to the surface of the water so that your lungs don't explode when you're rising up and you've got Boyle's Law going on. It's a very serious environment and you have to use science and knowledge and understanding to get out of it safely. We took an exam to make sure we understood everything he was talking about and then the next day at sunrise we headed off to the pool. You guys nervous? I don't know. We're good. No. No. You're good? Yeah. I feel, I feel like everybody's acting like you're not nervous but you're all nervous. My this philosophy is, is that you're all going to die sometime or later and I guess this is the time to do it. <laughs> I can't swim. You can't swim at all? Can I get a show of hands of who can't swim? Nah. We got to say you can't swim? You can't swim? Uh, not really. So you guys are not allowed to be buddies, right? Because one of you, that's awesome. So are you scared? Uh, so let's be buddies. Uh, terrified. Okay, so I'm gonna get to get Matt which is a little intimidating if I'm honest. Well before they strap you into a helicopter, you first have to learn how to be upside down underwater and let water flood your sinuses. When you first get in this tipping device, the tasks are pretty simple. The first thing you do is grab the seat between your legs in what's called the rodeo grip, and then you find the exit, grab it, unbuckle your seat belt, and then pull yourself out. After you get good with that, they make it a little bit more difficult by adding a hatch that you had to break free of, and then eventually they add the full regulator so you're breathing before you exit. I didn't know we were gonna do this. I thought we were actually going anywhere down. I didn't either. I'm kinda glad that we're actually taking the steps to actually show us how to do it. Yeah, do that thing and what I'm gonna do about rolling Yeah, it's like crawl, walk, run, isn't it? I've gotta be honest about this part. I have an advanced open water scuba certification, so I'm used to breathing off a regulator. So while the Marines were over there learning how to breathe off a regulator for the first time, I thought I was just gonna walk up and flip upside down and breathe naturally and it wasn't gonna be a problem. I was very wrong. Every time I've ever been scuba diving, I've had this type of mask on that covers your nose. Oh. The problem is, when you don't have that mask on and you flip upside down, water floods into your nose and fills your sinuses and the last thing your body wants to do at that moment in time is take a breath. He was holding me down there and encouraging me to breathe, which was challenging because I had to overcome my mental fear of inhaling water while at the same time clearing a regulator and taking a life-giving breath. This was the hardest part of the training for me. <laughs> What? Sucks getting all the water up the nose, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than I thought. It's the nose thing, isn't it? It is, and that's what gets people to push that panic button. This is the simulator. It contains every escape hatch that's common on Marine Corps aircraft, and it's super intimidating. You know, everybody here is trying to be tough and all, but it's a helicopter going underwater. It's pretty intimidating. Ditching, ditching, ditching! Holy cow. The first dunk is the craziest because everybody's freaking out just a little bit. For example, you can see this Marine right here has lost his bearings. He's out of his seat, he's turned around, he's no longer got his reference point. Everything gets so chaotic that the safety diver ditches my camera to swim in and start saving people. Yeah, only one passed on that one. 
they lost reference points. They ended up releasing their seat belts first and then trying to get their flak off and it's just like a loose sock in the dryer. If you don't put your butt in the seat, what happens? You get lost, I got lost. Yeah, you get lost. You think, think about walking through your house with everything upside down. You're not gonna know where the doorways are. You're not gonna know what to do. By the way, think about what these instructors are going through on every run. They have to look and be aware of everything that's going on in the midst of this crazy environment. Find out the person that's in trouble, figure out how to help them and do it quickly. And if they don't do that, somebody could be injured or even die. This is a serious job for these instructors. Calm yourselves and focus on what we're doing here. I'm trying to keep you alive if you crash the sea, right? So focus on that. It's a pretty serious job you have here. Well, it's high risk training. There's a chance of death, huh? High risk training. Interesting. <laughs> hey, the divers are ready. Ditching, ditching, ditching. Ditching. Because you're just watching this on video, it's really hard to explain how completely disorienting this is. I mean, everything that was sinking now seems like it's floating, your bubbles are going the wrong direction, your feet are coming up over the top of you. For example, watch this simulator reset and watch what the seat buckles do in the water. Your reference frame is rotating, okay? So if you watch this, you can understand it, but imagine trying to understand that while you're blind, doing a coordinate transformation in your head while at the same time you're getting a swirly and your sinuses are filled with water. So if you can do that, you're gonna be great. <laughs> you unbuckle, your body will right itself to the surface, right? Your lungs are full of air. And when you do that in an upside down aircraft, oh no, now everything's upside down. It's, it's hard to imagine and how to get out of that thing. It's better to stay inverted with it. When you go underwater, your vision drops to 2200. Or worse, muddy waters, it's dark, it's late at night, you can't see anything. So sitting in a seat, you know where you are. You're sitting in a seat, you know exactly where you are. And then we tell them, hey, don't, don't just pop loose and pull yourself along. Stay in the seat, slide in the seat. Because the, the aircrafts are all set up with seats with their backs to the, to the wall where the exits are, right? So if you're in a seat, you kind of know where you're at. You kind of know which way, oh, it's to my right. Even though it's muddy, I can go to my right, about five seats down, and I should be able to feel on the wall and find my exit, right? If you, if you leave the seat, you'll go right side up and then it's like, oh no, now the chairs are hanging from the it's ceiling. It's over, once you lose it's disorienting. that, once you lose that frame of reference, it's hard to get it back. It's not impossible to find your way out if that happens, but it's harder. On the second dunk, people tend to be a little bit more serious about not dying. If the first dunk is about panic, the second dunk is about staying calm and learning to take your time and think. Okay guys, now that you've got air, it gives you a little bit of time to get out, stay calm. I wanna see at least two breaths of air before you start trying to get out. Okay. The next few runs, they give you a bottle, which seems like it would solve all your problems, but it doesn't. I know it's hard to remember, but your face is filled with water up to your sinuses. This Marine that you're seeing, he's having a hard time getting that first breath because his sinuses are full. So he does the symbol asking the instructors to help pull him out. He puts his hands on his head and the instructors stop what they're doing and pull him out of the simulator. If you have that problem again, pinch your nose while you're still in your seatbelt. Take a deep breath. Once you let go of your nose, that epiglottis will be shut and then use your hands to get out of that helicopter. By the third run, people are starting to understand what's going on. The trick is to keep your reference points, think with your brain, and make it out alive. You can see here, it's way more efficient looking than the earlier runs. When you have a situation that goes bad pretty quick and stuff literally hits the fan, like the rotors start hitting the water and life turns upside down and you, you feel like you're sinking, you're in over your head and it's a situation you don't know how to deal with. Some of these guys didn't know how to swim. If you freak out in that moment, you're gonna stay in that dark place. That's literally suicide. You cannot do that. What you have to do is stay anchored to the truth, stay anchored to the things that you know, keep your reference frame. For me in my life, personally, I have things that I stay anchored to that keep me aligned to truth. So in that situation, you do that, 
and then you start thinking towards the safe exit from the situation. If you don't react correctly and you don't slow down and think, things can go very bad in a hurry. It's very, very important not to freak out in the chaos. Take one decision after another, slowly thinking it through, that gets you closer and closer to the light. And eventually, once you do that in a series, you will make it out and you will see the light again. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was exciting training. Um, I feel like I learned a lot, both for my work in helicopters and for life in general. I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> Good job, dude. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. All right, note to self, swimming lessons. <laughs> <laughs> to do. <laughs> you did good, man. Thank you. Oh, All right. Yeah. That was way better. Make it out of the helicopter for this one. Hey, and the real thing? Better.